Okay. Well, thank you all for coming uh, to this month's uh, reports committee meeting. I thought we could take a look at some bugs. There were a few that have been added in the last few uh, days. Well, days, <laughs> relative. <laughs> so um, I thought we could take a look at them. And then if anybody has anything, or if anyone has anything specific they'd like to talk about, um, we can do that first, if you'd rather. Um, I have one question about the simple reporter, but mm -hmm. we, don't, we can do it now or later. It doesn't really matter. Okay, well, let's do it now and then. Okay. Um, I haven't looked at it that much, but um, I was trying to see if some of our existing reports could be translated into the simple reporter so mm -hmm. that our libraries might have an easier time running them. Um, so I was looking at a circulation report and I wanted to run a report of overdues, but include patron information. And I couldn't see a way to do that, like personal information about the person. And I think I'm just that's intentional. Okay, that's what I was, it, that's probably been said before, but I hadn't looked at it closely enough. So, okay. So it doesn't look like there's really any way to combine the two. I mean, aside from very basic, either more specific patron data with a little bit of CERC information or starting with CERC and getting very general patron information. Okay. Yeah, I think they did that intentionally so that it okay. would, I guess, just for privacy reasons, not make it super easy to report out who has what checked out at the moment. Okay. So. Um, hmm. yeah, I want to say that's the, re I can't specifically say, yeah. but that is my that, hunch. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> we yeah. just have so many reports that are so patron based and that, um, I'm just trying to see if there are ways that the simple reporter could maybe mm -hmm. be, maybe be used for our libraries, but I don't know. Yeah, the find the ones that we've been finding people use are mostly um, like just like mailing lists and yeah. uh, shelving lists. Um, I haven't really tried anything overly complicated. Yeah. Um, and I always like for overdues, I always lean more towards the open circ table. So, um, I feel like that always did did our circulation for stuff like that a little bit easier, but. Um, open cert? Yeah. Let's, Does um, that include more than just, just, I don't know, I haven't really used that one. Let's see. Open circulation. Go down. Yeah, uh, let's see, share my screen. So this is in the full reporter. So for open circulation, and then if you need to get down to the patron, it's joined in the under circulation. Okay. So, the, so then oh, that way. Okay. Cause I was, what was happening for me was I was always forgetting to include like, was it return? Was it back? So like when I was oh. running stuff on just circulation between these two dates, I was never always, it was getting historical info, but not stuff that's currently still out. So I would, I switched over to open circulation and I found well, we were, we were getting better results. Well, I never even looked at that one. So now I learned something new. <laughs> so thanks. Oh, no problem. Well, that'll be helpful. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Usually I rely on you to answer these questions. <laughs> so. Okay. And the other question, I, I did actually have another question, and I'm mm -hmm. sure this is something else basic that I've overlooked. But if you're running in the simple reporter, like I was looking at um, an item report. Is that what collections, I guess? Mm -hmm. um, does it? I wanted to filter out deleted items, but I, I thought, oh, that I know that's there somewhere, but I couldn't see it. It is. Is that there? Yes. And I can never. 
I know I'd seen it, it's but I couldn't under find it. item deleted. If you go, I usually go down to the all fields on the yep. display. Oh, wait, filters. All fields, and then it should be item ah, deleted at question mark. Yeah. yeah. They're okay. not named the same thing. And so I'm always like, wait, what are we calling it? Okay. Like the other day, there was one that was, I was looking for current barcode. Yeah. And they ch the name is now primary barcode in the simple reporter, not oh. current barcode. And I'm like, oh, that makes more sense because, you know, it's the one that has the primary checked. But I it took me like 10 minutes to find it. I was like, wait, there has to be. Like, well, I was looking for that today, too, and I didn't see it. Um, some names make more sense, but mm -hmm. if you've been using the same name for like 10 years, I, I'd almost rather they just left it <laughs> what, what it already was, because it's yeah. just hard to remember that. It, okay. Yeah, it's learning like All a right. whole new vocabulary. Okay. All right. Well, now I've learned two new things, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Samantha, did you have anything that you wanted to ask about? Um, not really. I'm doing a couple of reports training webinars uh, for our NC Cardinal people in the next month or so. And I just looking for any tips I can give. I've actually already oh. just added that thing about um, patron data in circulation reports in the simple reporter for my simple reports training. So okay. that was perfect. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Taryn. Did you have anything? I assume. No, I've, I've been doing non-report stuff so I don't have anything new to say <laughs> okay well I thought, I thought we could go ahead oh, I was just I thought I'd just come in anyway thanks um I thought we could go through some bugs um let me share my screen I know everyone's favorite thing is looking at bugs um so one thing I did know for the simple reporter um this, it only uses the calendar picking tool when you pick um, the date to date field. So like if you do, so like this is the collections. So say you're looking for the create date, or here's a good one. So you have item active date, item active date time, year, month, and these are great. But if you pick them, only this one uses the date picker and these do not. And so you're kind of like, well, what do I put? So there's no like indicator of like formatting or anything. So like this one, I know you're supposed to do 2024-01, but like if you're not used to it, you're not gonna know that. Um, and this one obviously is pretty easy. It's just the year, but like the actual date is this. So you'd have to do the formatting. Um, the other one that is a little confusing is like, this is date and time. And then it gives you the calendar picker, but like you have to still pick the transform of date for it to actually run correctly on just the date if that makes sense. Because I had someone running it, um, looking for patrons who were created in a specific time frame, And so when they ran it like this, with just like two dates, so say they did beginning of the month to the, oh, this is a bad example, bad example, dates. But if they do May to May 31st, when they ran it, they thought they were going to get everyone who was created between the 1st and 31st, but they would it would cut off everyone created on the 31st because raw data is looking at timestamps. And so you they actually had to run it to get everybody like this. And then we're like, okay, well, you have to actually change this mm. to this. So like... It would be nice if the calendar thing was used, I think, a little bit more yes. for um, formatting purposes. Or yes. So for, I, I have not used Simple Reporter at all because we don't have, a, have it implemented, but um, if you transform to something like month, does the mm -hmm. calendar picker change? Okay. It, oh, it disappears no. and then it goes to It doesn't to the, use a... Mm. 
But, yeah. but not all of those um, fields have the appropriate transforms either, right? Look at the, well, I'm looking at um, item create date and shouldn't that doesn't even have any of the date transforms. Yeah, it doesn't. It just has these, which are usually text. Yeah. yeah. But isn't so, that actually a date field? Or is it not? Yeah, it would yeah. be an actual date field. Yeah. yeah, it should be. So uh, is that part of this bug or is that another bug? Or um, I I explained it would be helpful if fields such as these had the, co the calendar okay. picker tool. I think that maybe this is another bug then. Okay. What, what do you folks think that? Well, I'm just wondering if it is the date picker not available? Like, how is the date picker related to the transform options? Like, is that connected or is that completely separate? See, I I would think that the the um the date picker the calendar picker shouldn't show up until the transform was selected. Mm -hmm. Wait, is that what? No, but that's not what it's doing, right? It's because if you have raw data, it's showing the date picker. Mm -hmm. So but, maybe that's the bug. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it it should also be showing a count, uh, some sort of picker if you change to like month or um, I forget what the mm -hmm. other options are. Um, but uh, but like let's see, because so it, like in um in the old reporter if you choose month i'm pretty sure it gives you drop downs like 2024 20, 1 2024 20, mm -hmm. 2 that kind of thing yeah. but i could totally be wrong it's been a while but, but if the transforms are, are not correct then the date picker will never display right right okay in the full reporter mm, now i have to find it template that has a date <laughs> <laughs> uh, no oh here this one oh. so uh, yeah month and year and then it only it lets you pick any but then it does the Okay, so it's it still gives you the date picker, but it transforms it for you rather than you mm -hmm. having to type it in, which is what Simple Reporter is doing. Yeah. So should we file a separate bug that's, or should I amend, can I amend this bug? What is the proper protocol for this? I think amending it probably makes more sense because it's all going to be related. Okay. Like so... you, could, you should be able to change the title. Um, okay. Do like, I have to indicate in some way that I'm changing it? No, it'll record it in the um in the okay. it'll add an automatic like comment line. So add the calendar date picker tool to based on the transform. Is that more of an accurate? That makes more sense to me. Does it make more sense to everybody else? Okay. Yeah, but I guess I'm wondering: Do we need? An, I still need another bug for. I think just adding a comment, um, say what, like uh, you know, um, an example would be the item create date, blah blah blah. Um, doesn't so, show the, doesn't show the options, the trans, the date transform options. Okay. I guess I'm wondering. If it's not showing those, is it not recognizing what type of field it is? And it's not recognizing it as a date? And is that a well, that bug in and of should... itself? But well, if it's working in um the old reporter, then that means it's based on the field mapper. Um, let me look up the field mapper. What source were you using for that? Um for in the simple reporter or um yeah in the well, simple reporter it's collections uh, and then in the full reporter my example is using i think circulation
Um, yeah, and I don't think those are written out. The, the, naming them different things in the Simple Reporter makes it so much harder to troubleshoot. It's like, what database table is that actually tied to? Right. And it's probably because they've created like special views for that, but that doesn't yeah. help. Because uh, when I look up collections in the field mapper, it just takes me to money collections. Yeah. So if they did create a special database view just for the simple reporter for that, they probably neglected to put the correct data type in with that field. Okay. <clears throat> um, does this make sense, this change? It makes sense should, to me. Yeah. Should should I, I put it? It also in the transforms for these fields are not date related; they're text related. Yeah. I think I'll, uh, has, it, has anyone checked the other date fields or, cause I could check and see if there are others that may be formatted incorrectly. Yeah, I only did well. a few. Yeah, but okay. if you want, I'll update this and then if you want right. to add additional ones. If I, yeah, if I find any others, I'll add them to this. Okay, let me put this one in the chat so you have the number. Well, thank you. That one was good. <laughs> um, well, let's, anything else on this one that we want to address? I don't think so. Okay. Not me. Um, this one is already, uh, looks like this we have, this one's applied to us because uh, it happened to us, uh, where if you use the reporter source holds item or it's called hold copy ratio per bib and pickup library and its descendants. Um, it's a source for looking at hold ratios across uh, specific pickup libraries rather than just the entire consortia. You can look at like just systems. Um, it used to take us about three or over two hours to run this report Oof. and then it, it stopped working for some of our fourth org unit tiers fourth tier org units so it because it would clock out at mm. three and a half hours <laughs> so um mike and steven at equinox uh, got it down to five minutes which like holy moly that is so fast <laughs> in comparison so um, if you folks use that, um, if you use that source, um, there is a fix for it. So just wanted to share that one. So you have it applied to production. Um, mm -hmm. do you, for us. Do you yeah. can probably go ahead and sign off on that. Um, is that how that works? Yes. Yeah, because okay. you're you're t you could put in the comments that um you know that you have you've had it applied to your production server for X amount of time and okay and I then check the dates that we got that fixed yeah, but yeah and then just add your sign off info and then add the signed off tag okay okay cool I only do sign offs during 
bug squashing week, so I've never. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same <laughs> process any other time. Okay. Um, this is a wish list one. We're uh, just updating the verbiage from circulating library to check out or new library on the circulation sources. Um, so mm -hmm. the ones that I found it in in the combined age and active circulations and age patronless circulation sources, it still says circulating library. Whereas in other sources, it's check out renew library. So um, that's a good one if anybody wants to add any other instances where they found those. Um, just because like in my brain, I got so used to the switch to check out and now I'm like, wait, I have to think about it. Yeah. In some of these older ones. Yeah. I think I think that's a bug I can actually fix. This one? Yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll sign that one to myself and give it a shot. Okay. That would be Not delightful. Great. Not this week, <laughs> but <laughs> Okay. Awesome. I'm not sure where else you'll run into it, so if anybody else knows of instances where it pops up, that would be helpful. Um this one is from May. That's a wish list one where you add a report field for StatCats last edited in a patron account. Um, so they wanted to see, including a report when patrons StatCats were changed specifically for their email newsletter, opt-in, opt-out. So that would be helpful. I think I'm gonna put this one in the chat if you agree. Um, I think I've already added my heat to that one. I will have to as well. Um, this one's from from you, Taryn. <laughs> the search <laughs> results uh, does not show folder hierarchy. So this is for the new reporter. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so since um, we're on 312, I haven't played, haven't, um, I forgot about it, the, the new stuff in 313. So when you do a result, it's just like name of the report template and and like who built it and all of that and the info about it and then it just says the folder it's in but it doesn't show you like the path to get to that folder so at least it's better than the old one which just showed you the file or the template and not anything else about it yeah this is i was very excited so um if you could add heat to that one, that would be very helpful. Some of these are pretty, um, oh, and then this one was my, my puppy for the week, uh, being able to report out on offline tables. So, um, and then Galen did explain it. So this is so that if you wanted to see, um, you know, how often people are using the offline mode and uploading things. So you can run an SQL query, but um, I think it would be easier uh, for some folks in the reporter. Um, mm -hmm. Most people don't have access to the SQL directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, so. can I can I go back to the, um, the StackCat bug with a patron account? The last edit one? Yeah. Okay. So are you is it are you saying that the edit date in the patron record should be updated when the stack head has changed? Or like is there an edit date for the stack head? So there's not an edit date for the stack head at the moment. So are you saying that should be added to the, the table? Or I'm not. Um, yeah. Let me reread it. Yeah. Is that yeah, what it would have to, Yeah, it would have to be added to the table. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I didn't see it there. Okay. 
Thanks. So that makes sense. Add it to the table and then also okay. add it to the field mapper and then to uh, and then um, add it to the script that saves the tables or saves the rows. Okay, thanks. Um, this one is a little bit, this is button sizing for grids in the new Angular report. Um, oh, here's a screenshot. Advanced uh, reports, there are sizing issues with the paging and truncation buttons in the, on the action grid. Oh, yeah, those are massive. <laughs> <laughs> so... Not the end of the world, not a complete showstopper, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that one's okay. I think we can, can we confirm that? Here, let's see. Oh. Hmm. I don't know which. I'm sorry sure. if you just heard me make a sound because I was reading an email from my arch enemy. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had uh -oh. arch enemies. <laughs> um, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably make that noise too. <laughs> I get emails from some people. Um, okay, so this one I can't really test because we don't have an instance to test it on. I don't, is the... um test servers have like the community test server is that on 313 or is that not yet I'm not sure okay well okay well we can always I'll try to check on that after and okay. if I can confirm it I will awesome Um, a last circulation or create date reporting source could be made faster. This one is beyond my depth, so um, I can't confirm it. But I'll trust you uh, to yeah. know. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> oh, and he has a patch, so... We'll just need someone to test it. Uh, if you are in a position to do so, let me share this one. Please feel free. And then the last one I have, I think, is this is not a new bug, but I feel like this one had a lot of activity lately. Yes. So this was this is going to be in three fourteen. Ooh. And this is the um, more granular permissions. Wait, hold on. Yeah, access to the reporter. Um, so I did want to share this one just so people were kind of aware that this would be coming, which I'm kind of excited about. Okay. I don't fully understand it, uh, but if you want to read the specs, they are here included. So um, I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet, but and there is a related bug as well. So those were the only the ones that I had seen recent for recent activity. Um, All the rest are a little bit older. Uh, 
Um, that's kind of all I had. <laughs> Is there anything else that you folks are interested in or a bug that you feel very passionate about and want to champion? Samantha, I know you said you were going to be doing trainings. Do you have any, like, did you want us to chat about that? Like, just how the various consortia do training? Um, sure. Okay. I feel like ours needs a lot of work and fails. <laughs> so we kind of have some videos, and then um, it's kind of one of the topics that I have the most trouble training on. Um, we kind of give the, you know, this is how you create folders and this is how you clone. And then after that, it's kind of like, I don't, I can't wrap my head around how to train people on it. Like, I'll ask, do you have a specific report that you want? And then we try and we walk through rep and like how to create it. But it's all very like specific to um, the library's needs. So I'm also interested in hearing how other people do training. I usually try and point them to the Chris Sharp training um, that he did a couple of years ago for the conference. Um, and But then people are like, I don't want to watch a three hour video. I'm like, but it's so educational. So Yeah, it gets, it depends on what level you want to get into too. Like we have, um, we have like a online basic reports training class that's like more are just like here's how you run the report templates that we create for you <laughs> kind of thing rather than here's how you understand how to build a report from scratch and what the database looks like like chris does mm -hmm. so it's the vast majority of our users do not need to know that deep of a level i mean it would be nice if they did but we're not going to force that so I guess does Carol, are you from NC Cardinal? Do you do you have like a folder of templates that everyone uses, or is it more like we do? Um, I'm, I think one of the bigger issues that we've been running into this year is that is realizing that a lot of people don't know about that. Mm -hmm. So um, most of my training, I've done a lot of report training this year has been focused on this is how you clone a report and here are all of the reports you can clone. Um, but I like I have a small kind of group that's really interested in going deeper. So that's kind of where I am now and I'm I'm struggling to figure out exactly which depth that should be because um, you know, they may want to go very deep, but they may not be ready to go as deeply as they want to go and, and finding that balance is tricky. They want to do complicated things, but they don't necessarily have the skill set to get as complicated as they think they need to get. If that makes sense. Hmm. I always try and steer people more towards the let's get you all of the info and then you can use Excel. Mm -hmm. and get those more you know filterings um no one loves everyone cringes when i said well you could build a pivot table for that <laughs> and they're like please don't ever say that word to me again <laughs> i admit so that i easier. still don't know how to use pivot tables <laughs> i'm really good at almost everything in excel except for pivot tables i, do, I can't wrap my head around them yeah and are they trying to use the pivot table function in the reporter? I'm like, no, 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 you can't, don't yeah. do that. I wish they could get rid of that. Um, because if it has more than like two things, like it doesn't work. So, um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure how, like, well, how far do you So. I'm planning to sort of start back at the beginning with reports training in the fall after we upgrade to 313. And basically with the new interface, I'm going to go back to all the basic training. But until then, um, I have two things scheduled and 
I'm pretty much good to go on one. And that's the one on the simple reports. And I, I feel like I've, I could get a lot more complicated with it, but I think I, the biggest problem that I have with simple reports or that um, staff have with simple reports is that they're, they're not that simple. Um, and I mean, in some ways they are obviously, and it simplifies aspects of it, but like what we were looking at before with the dates, there are things that are not simple and it's not clear what's going on when it fails. Um, and so that's sort of what I'm trying trying to figure out how to address without scaring people away from using that interface, if that makes sense. Um, and then next month I'm doing something on reports on bibliographic records. So if you've got any ideas on that mm -hmm. one, I know the thing that makes people angriest with that is when you get all those duplicates um, because, you know, people don't know how to use like the first... Um, sorry, I've got plumbers here and they're making, they're cutting into drywall right now. It's very noisy in my background. <laughs> um, um, so, you know, when you get the duplicates because you haven't used the first value thing. And so you're getting like a different line for each time there's a 100, you know, there's an author or something like that. Um, so I've got that tip, but what other tips are there for doing the record reports? Mine, my big reports tend to be like, I'm looking for, you know, records that have X value in them. They're never like, mm -hmm. I just need all of the values for that. <laughs> um, and as a non-cataloger, it took me a really long time to learn mm -hmm. it. Um, what kind of, of reports are they looking to run? Do you know? Or oh, no, okay. Somebody we'll... just said they wanted oh. this, so I'm doing my best to uh, give it to them. I mean, yeah. we've had requests for reports, um, like I want to get a list of titles with this subject heading or by this author or something like mm -hmm. that. So I've created a few things like that, but um, those are the only ones I can really think of that our libraries have asked for related mm -hmm. to BIP records specifically it's like to me when we people are looking for bib record information it's usually just easier to use the catalog search yeah um most of our reports are copy based rather than bib record based mm -hmm. yeah. that we get asked for um just see like we mm. have one for bibs with monographic parts Mm, yeah because we have a monograph parts problem at the moment don't we all uh, yes yes yeah. we do <laughs> that could be a whole nother quote <laughs> um bib quality report we have mm, we've been having folks look at those we don't use the quality fields or the um Oh, sorry. I'm thinking about like the condition. Mm -hmm. Are you no, talking the about the mark, the mark quality? Mm -hmm. The mark oh. quality. Oh. Uh, fixed fields, oh. like where the audience is null, or they're looking for something in a specific flattened fixed field. Um, so are those like cleanup reports that they're trying to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. I'm just looking at ones that yeah. ours have. Yeah. Well, actually, I see we also have some that um, look for um, records that are parts of a specific series. Um, and also some that um, if you use award notes, we've had libraries who try to pull together lists of titles related to specific awards, but <laughs> I don't know how comprehensive that always is. But, but we do add awards notes, so that might be useful. And yeah, also, like, like oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the only other one that I see is, um, is where you want to match the fixed field. And so that, like, if it's a book, it should have the correct form. If it's a DVD, it should have the correct form. And if it doesn't, like, it, this report does that.
So I guess overall, it's just like, what are they exactly looking for? And then maybe go from there. Yeah, I think based on who asked for this, my guess is that, and I'm, obviously I can reach out to them and see what they had in mind. Um, but my guess is that we're probably stuff on cleanup is probably actually going to be a big hit. So this this is some good ideas to you know, look into. Mm -hmm. And if you want any of ours, I could do some screenshots if that makes your life easier rather than you having to recreate the wheel. I mean, if you if you don't mind, that'd be super helpful. Yeah, do you want to put your email in the chat and we yeah. can email you some screenshots? That'd be great. Thank you so much. Someday we'll be able to export a template. <laughs> <laughs> that I cannot be, wait. That would be wonderful. Oh, yeah, we have, oh, I think Susan made a report that somebody requested for a list of bib records by specified mark field value. It's actually pretty hard for me to find any reports that anybody's built for bib records. Oh, and our beloved pre-cat cleanup report, which is <laughs> delete your pre-cats. Yep. Please. Or if you like OC if you have OCLC holdings and you don't have the the live connection, like if you add like so if you have to send OCLC or additions or deletes, that's another one that we use. But we do a yeah we do a um, last copy report when people do their deletions to so they can update OCLC. I don't really know how that works though because I've never done it. A lot of reports I do are <laughs> here it is and I don't know what you, <laughs> you do with it but have fun. Oh, looks like Elaine used to use one that was a list of undeleted bibs with no holdings. But no. I'm not sure how 56 she was. Field? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, let me see. If, she might have just been looking at everything. Let's see. No, she wasn't filtering that out. So I'm not sure how she was using it. It might have also been something she started building and then never actually used. Oh. <laughs> I have folders of those. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking to see. And then, like the the record notes, or I don't know if you use record notes, but stuff like that would be cool as well. We at Pines, we usually don't. Um, we use a lot of copy copy notes. We just found recently a whole mess of bibs that don't have titles <laughs> oh no <laughs> and so um we've been slowly cleaning those up and we've oh. been putting in like bib notes like because we can't delete them because i don't know if the item is still at the library or not oh my gosh so um like if it's like i don't know if it's like a reference book I, it's got like nothing like sometimes we can figure it out because it has like a partial name and then like the author, but like some of them are just like imported on this day. And it's like, oh, that's not helpful. Um, 
but yeah, we've been putting in record notes like needs full overlay once you figure out what it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to use that later and be like, here you go, library, here are all the bibs that you have items on that have no title. I will stop looking at our report templates. But at least then that's a few things to get you started and. No, that helped a lot. I really appreciate it. Um, I think I have sort of a shape in mind for what this is going to look like now. So, and before I really do. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take some screenshots and probably later this week and send them over your way. That'd be great. Thank you. Anything else? I'm not sure who is here from CW Mars, but did you have anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I think next month we were gonna try and see if Tiffany could come and give us some insight into acquisitions reports, but I have to double check with her about that. She is going to be onboarding our two new people um, in July, one starting on the 1st and one starting on the 10th. So I'm not sure if she will have time. Okay. Um, just she may she might I'm not gonna say no for her but she's mm -hmm. on a plane right now so I can't ask her <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah we'll check in with her um if not July maybe August or September but if you have other topics that you would like to uh chat about in terms of reports just let me or uh, Jessica know and we can get something on the books I know we kind of chatted about um some topics during the uh, Hackaway, and they're completely escaping me at the moment. So I will. Go that was back a long time ago. Oh, yeah. was, that was like was last month. Years, <laughs> years ago. Um, I will say that we just finished our reports permissions project, so I've been very uh, focused on that. So we like broke out all the reports permissions into individual. You can be a runner or you can be an admin. And so we had to have everybody sign a waiver and then we had to update permission groups and it's a lot of touching a lot of accounts and then inadvertently giving people <laughs> acquisitions admin instead of reports admin. And then they're like, why can't I do this? And I'm like, oh, was, they're right next to each other in the list and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> So, but congratulations, you're now an acquisitions admin. <laughs> Just what you always wanted. Yeah, even though you don't use acquisitions. Um, yeah, so uh, while I don't recommend it, it was it was probably a very good thing that we did it. It's just very tedious whenever you have to edit permission groups. So it's a whole year, or it feels like a whole year that you're doing it. Yeah. Well, congratulations so, for getting it done. Arrived. We're, think, we're still not there. <laughs> yeah, I was at your the permissions group meeting yesterday, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, it's patience! The patience you folks have to <laughs> change individual people." Some people are like, "Can we get this?" I'm like, "Nope. <laughs> Either you get the whole thing, or you get none. Like that's it." Yeah. Do you actually? <laughs> just for our sanity, it makes it easier. All right, well, if there's nothing else, I will bid you all adieu and see you next month. Okay, have a good okay. rest of your day. Thank you too, you. Bye. 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 Thanks.